Hey, y'all. I'm Bud Elliott, and this is Cover Free College Football Summer School. We've done our research on the teams, and now we're bringing on the top team experts from the 24-7 Sports Network to help us fill in the blanks. Please follow us on Twitter at Cover 3 Podcast. That's Cover 3 Podcast. And leave us a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. All right. Class is in session. All right, guys. Back here with the Cover 3 Podcast Summer School Edition for College Football, and I am pleased to be joined by Nathan King. Nathan, let's talk a little Auburn, man. Let's do it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So great coverage from you guys. Auburn 24-7 Sports is the spot to be following Nathan King. All right, so 6-7 and seven last year, very difficult schedule. If you look at the power ratings, they had him as like a top 30 team. Not that Auburn fans' goal is necessarily to be a, a top 30 quality team, uh, but that's kind of what you get 6-7 and seven if you have a top 30 quality team and you have like a top five strength of schedule rating. So um, unfortunately at Auburn, if you slip even a little bit, that schedule doesn't slip and thus the the losses come. I, I wanted to start with you here, just sort of filling in the gaps as I, as I do my, my prep uh, for the season. Offense last year was power rated kind of in the fifties, brand new coach and Brian Harson, obviously new schemes, new players, uh, far more efficient than explosive for the most part. It seemed like, like I could get first downs, but it felt like they were always a, a little bit just a hair off trying to create the explosive play new coordinator in the building. Are, are we expecting anything drastically different, either scheme or, or, or pace or, or player usage? No, not at okay. all. Not in the slightest might've been the case. If Austin Davis had, had hung around, obviously he came over from the Seahawks um, quarterback guru, but decided to take a step back from coaching. Um, I believe he launched a, a financing firm like last month. Um, mm-hmm. So he legitimately, that was his reasoning. Um, but no, Eric Keesaw, um, he'd been with, he's the new OC, been with Harson for a while at Boise State as a receivers coach and then, or excuse me, quarterbacks coach and then got promoted um, to work as the OC there. Yeah, from talking to everybody um, this spring, which obviously just wrapped up for them um, over the weekend, doesn't sound too different. Still a lot of power running, um, a lot of two tight end sets. They're actually they went more uh, tight end split out wide this spring because just default numbers at receiver were not great. And so they they featured the tight ends a lot. That'll probably be a big theme of this season. But, yeah, you're right. Talking about the lack of explosiveness is something that's 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 plagued this team even back to the later stages of the Malzahn era. I don't remember the last time they had a consistent receiver, even a guy like Anthony Schwartz, who could take a 10, 15 yard pass and turn it into a 60, 70 yard touchdown, which. Yes, with Alabama, Ohio State, that's what the best offenses do. Obviously, they've got those playmakers. Auburn's still looking for that, that receiver. Um, and down the stretch of last season, I mean, if they were in the top 40, I believe, right? You said 40, 50s um, yep. of power ranking on offense. That all came from when Bo Nix was healthy because when he went down, um, boy, I think they had, I think in the second half of the season, they scored three touchdowns in the second half over their final six games, something like that. And their second half points per drive was like 1.2. Or something like that. Um, just it was really, really bad down the stretch of the season. So whether TJ Finley is the answer or not didn't really look like it at the end of last year. But um, yeah, we'll 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 see. But this group, uh, you know, under Keysaw now Brian Harson, who, who we presume will call plays, doesn't necessarily look like it's going to be that different from what Auburn fans saw um, in 2021. So let let's let's go there. Uh, Bo Nix has transferred out to Oregon to be with with former uh, you know QB coach, offense coordinator Kenny Dillingham. Uh, but Auburn does bring in Zach Calzada, who uh, had a, a promising kind of up and down season when he was thrust into the starting role there at Texas A&M. He was obviously the backup uh, before Haynes King for the Aggies went down in that game against Colorado. You also bring in Robbie Ashford, who is is you know, kind of from you know from that area. And I know Auburn was involved with him when he was in high school, if I recall. Uh, and then T.J. Fenley's still there. Are are, are you? Of the mindset that one of these guys has the advantage right now, I think actually it's 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 gone from beginning slash middle of spring. TJ Finley, pretty sizable advantage because you know, obviously a guy that started three games at the end of the season, um, just has you know has control of the offense from last year. Um, you know knows knows what Key saw and the and Harson want to do. Key saw was still on the staff last year; he's the receivers coach. Um, so you know he knows what they want to accomplish on the offense side of the ball. The playmakers around him all know him. But I think things kind of leveled out and, and came to a head with Ashford on A-Day, um, which is Auburn's spring game. He was the offensive MVP, 
numbers i don't even need to like this, there's no use getting into them they don't really tell a story and obviously you shouldn't really like focus too much on that um he's just a wild card for them and he's a guy that a lot of auburn fans on our board in particular a lot of auburn fans that i saw just talking about what the ceiling of this team can be and whether we already know what we have from a guy like finley and a guy like calzada in fact a guy like calzada did it with better talent at texas a&m so you know has there been kind of a cap put on what TJ Finley can accomplish? Maybe not. He could just have a big summer and, and emerge into a better player. But is is Ashford kind of that dual threat, really athletic, made some great plays on the run, just a really good-looking player, really fun to watch. The defensive players, even after the spring game, were like, yeah, he's fun to play against, trying to contain him in the pocket. Um, so I think, you know, I don't. nobody emerged in the spring in terms of, you know, head and shoulders above, which is to be expected from this group. Um, I truly do believe you head into the fall now with this thing mostly deadlocked between TJ Finley because of his experience, Robbie Ashford because of the way he closed things out and kind of that different dynamic he gives you. And then Calzada. Calzada didn't do anything in the spring. He went through non-contact reps, but he didn't even play in the spring game. Um, Ironically, he's still dealing with a shoulder issue. He suffered in the Auburn game last year. Um, But he'll be good for the fall and, you know, his experience, 10, 10 starts last year. You have to think he'll be on the same track as the rest of them. So should be really, really interesting. And, of course, you know, We've got three full months now to just speculate and talk about that quarterback battle. Um, but I really do think it's it's mostly deadlocked heading into the fall, which is obviously the most interesting possible outcome from the spring. So quite a bit of uncertainty there uh, at, at quarterback for Auburn, but they have some options. Uh, two guys who we're fairly certain about, Tank Bigsby and and Hunter. Uh, there are both back, if, if I've seen like the most updated uh, roster, as is most of the offensive line, I, I, I think. I, I mean, I'm reading into this, but the run game is going to have to be the strength of this offense. I would assume it will be, they will force it to be. Yes. Um, You know, last season, I I believe they were middle of the pack in the sec in terms of rushing numbers. Um, Again, when Bo Nix was healthy, a little bit more explosive of a passing game. Um, But yeah, tank Bigsby is going to be the focal point of this offense, but you know, huge margin over anybody else. Um, That's just because they're still trying to figure out what they've got at wide receiver. You mentioned Jarquez Hunter. He was a three-star at a Mississippi last year. Burst onto the scene. I believe he had close to 600 rushing yards on the season. He actually missed most of the spring, had a cleanup on his leg, but he'll be fine for fall camp. So you've got a really nice one-two punch there with those guys. And yes, so there were six possible offensive linemen who could have come back using that, exercising that COVID year, and four of them did so. So that's, you know, it was a position you, when the season ended, it was like, man, this could get really dire. This was a group that already wasn't incredible. If you lose all six of these seniors, or at least close to them, the majority of them, might be in a really hairy spot. You're going to have to lean heavily on the transfer portal. Instead, they're going to bring back four or five starters on the offensive line. And so if you're looking for a silver lining of this Auburn offense, which obviously you know Auburn fans are trying to do, um, you know, it is that expectation that maybe this group, the run game, they will take the expected step forward. What is it looking at? It's, it's year two of Brian Harson's offense. Some of the assistants are different, are different. It's his offense. Does that group take a little bit of a step forward? Tank Bigsby might be his last college season before he, before he turns pro. He's a junior. He's going to have his eye, you know, his sights set on having a big season. Jarquez Hunter, can he improve? So, yes, absolutely. Not only because it's the power run game, high formation, pro style thing that he likes to do, that Harson likes to do, but just talent in, in terms of it, maybe even, you know, particularly at the beginning of the season, heading into that Penn State game. I really just think they're going to lean really heavily on this ground game. They've got a great group of tight ends, too. They'll lean heavily throwing the ball to them while they're still figuring out what they got at, at quarterback and at receiver. So, uh, Losing Kobe Hudson and, and, and losing Demetrius Robertson, you safe to assume there there will likely be a drop off there. From Kobe Hudson's spot, yes. Um, Demetrius Robertson, I was actually very ineffective toward down the stretch of the season. Um, sort of had his job taken away from him at punt returner because he just couldn't hold on to the ball. And so, uh, but Kobe Hudson, yeah, I mean Auburn fans, of course, tried to downplay that as not necessarily a huge loss. He's their best receiver by a mile last season. Shedrick Jackson emerged kind of. Um Javarius Johnson did some nice things, but he's had he's had injury issues in the past. Kobe Hudson was consistent. Um he was putting Alabama defenders and at future NFL players on skates in that game. Really, really talented player. Um so that's a huge loss for them. And and you know, kind of like you're mentioning, they are looking for any and all playmakers to emerge at receiver. Any inkling they can get of that in the spring, they were latching onto it. Um, and so they're really trying to get these guys, you know, to improve a little bit heading into next season. I believe week six or seven of last year, according to PFF, they led the SEC in drops midway through the year. And it was like, 
by six or seven drops over over the number two team. So it is not only a group that is losing a couple guys, and they lost a couple depth pieces to the transfer portal. They're breaking in their third receivers coach of the Harson era because he fired the one last season four weeks in. So it's the third. It's Ike Hilliard who's in the NFL. Um, not only are they doing that, but you lose those guys. Um, and so they're they're tinkering around with some things. Landon King is a really talented tight end. They're kind of making him a, a receiver tight end hybrid at that split out position. Um, so yeah, you, you you'd have to think that's that's kind of a struggle for them right now, especially as they they work in a new quarterback competition. That again is why we're gonna you know we're gonna see them lean on the tight end in the run game so much. For sure. All right, so let's go ahead and decide the ball that has really kind of carried Auburn for the last I don't know, three or four years. I feel like you could pretty much always count on the Tigers to have somewhere between a good to great defense uh, in, in, in the SEC. Uh, I'm scanning the depth chart here, Nathan. It, it looks like all their top defensive linemen are back, most of them at least, but then the depth is – who is backing up? Or is Auburn just going to try to go with like five D linemen this year and and, and hope the injury gods are, are – uh, look upon them fondly. I think, yeah, you're, you summed it up perfectly that at the top, they're great. Um, you've got, you've got a four man front of Colby Wooden, who I think is a, is a breakout player waiting yeah. to happen. I mean, he's already been really good, but he's a guy that could come on even more. Uh, Marcus Harris is a Kansas transfer. who's very productive for them last year. Uh, Eku Liotta is a Northwestern transfer. He was really good. And then Derek Hall was third in the sec in sacks. You've got a great defensive front there. Um, yeah. Past them, they had nine defensive line transfers in the off season. So you're exactly right. You're hoping that, you know, an injury situation doesn't pop up there. They've, they've got a couple pieces, you know, they'll, they'll bring in, they've got Jeffrey M. He's the number one Juco defensive tackle in the country. Once he's healthy, that'll be nice for them. A couple pieces coming in. They'll look in the transfer portal as well. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's a concern if that, if that does end up happening, um, particularly because you lose your top two tacklers at linebacker, Zacoby so McLean and, and, and Chandler Wooten, you bring Owen Papo back. He didn't practice this spring, but he'll be back for the fall. Um, so you need that defensive front to set you up for success because you've got kind of a new wave of linebackers there um, on the second level. I think they should be fine along the D line. That's that's kind of one of been one of the strengths of this team over the past few seasons. They kind of just figure it out. Really, like you said, since the beginning of the Kevin Steele era, it's like top fifteen SP plus defense finish for this team over and over again, and it and it translated with Derek Mason um, last season, and then you know with Jeff Schmetting this year, shouldn't be that different. Still going to be the same base defense. They said they didn't want to change things up on on guys too much when they lost Derek Mason, you know, very suddenly they weren't expecting to have him leave the program. And so I don't think it'll be too different, but yeah, they will have to lean on that defensive front and, and hope there are no injuries. All right. Uh, last one. I'll get you out of here on. I really appreciate the time today. Bigger loss or more difficult in replacing them. McCurry and Monday or the linebackers. It's tough. Um, I would probably say the linebackers because of what you've had, waiting in the wings at defensive back for a while. Um, they're now going to have kind of a, cor a cornerback duo try to replace Roger McCreary. A um, guy named Jalen Simpson, who's been mm -hmm. a little injury bugged over the past couple of seasons, but when he's healthy, he's really, really good, um, really efficient player. And then Nehemiah Pritchett, they tried him out at nickel. He was great as a freshman uh, back in 2020. Uh, tried him out at nickel last year. Wasn't necessarily his strong suit. He's going to move back full-time to that boundary cornerback spot. And then at safety, uh, Zion Puckett is a really talented player who's had some injury troubles as well. If you can get him healthy, they, Auburn's done this over the past few years, similar defensive line. They've had, you know, four-star recruits cycle in every class. You're bringing in actually three four-star DBs in this class. So, um, you know, they've had guys cycling and waiting and getting playing time and kind of developing. So I would say it's the linebackers. Yeah, Owen Papo's great, um, but he's had some injury troubles over the last year. Um, and and just the, the production of a guy like Zacoby McClain, um, he's one of the best defensive players in the SEC I've seen. Uh, just stature, didn't have it. Speed, didn't necessarily have it. But somehow he's, you know, 13, 14 tackles a game. And then Chandler Wooten wasn't that far behind him last season. So losing those two guys, that's no that's no small thing at all. The linebackers that are on the roster now that are, that are coming up for the fall, trying to downplay it, of course, and trying to say, you know, that they imparted their knowledge on us and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we'll be able to kind of carry the torch for them, but I, I will be interested to see who steps up in their absence besides Owen Papo. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd probably say that's the bigger, uh, that's the bigger concern for them heading into the preseason. Nathan, really appreciate the time here on cover three summer school. Make sure you go follow Nathan, make sure you're checking out Auburn undercover. Thanks for taking us undercover uh, with Auburn here and uh, looking forward to see what the Tigers do in the transfer portal down the stretch and reading all your reports coming out of summer camp and, and fall camp. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Y'all take care. All right, buddy, be well. All right, that's the bell.
Cover 3 College Football Summer School is over for today, but don't worry. We'll be back soon with even more episodes filling you in on the top teams in college football. Please give us those five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Follow us on YouTube and on Twitter at Cover 3 Podcast, and we'll see you all soon.